Welcome to Big Toe Church. My name is Pastor Kim. It's so good to be here together today. It is a quiet day in the cove, and it is a little bit cold and a little bit raining, but we have joy in our hearts. Everyone, would you mind raise a standing up and saying hi to our, our online audience and saying hello? Hey, good morning. Good morning. Hello, Diane. Hello, Kay. Nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And now we have a lot of announcements we've gone through here today. But we also just want you to know at home that anytime you want to be included in this family, we would love to have you. And there are a lot of December things happening here. And please just email me, pastor.bigcovechurch at gmail.com, and I'd be happy to fill you in. Now let us worship the Lord. Come, let us celebrate all the wondrous gifts that God has given us and the gladness in our lives because of him. Please stand.
please join me in prayer. Lord of bounty and blessing, we come to you this day in gratitude for all that we have been given. We are grateful for the blessings and for the opportunities to be of service to others in your holy name. Bless each of us here that we may become true blessings to others. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Friends, it is right and it is good to come before the Lord. Um, I have actually had kind of a, a rough week last week. And so for me, coming before the Lord to say, oops, I didn't do the right thing, is really important. And I don't know about you, but I find that when I do that, I have a more grateful heart. We'll be talking about that a little bit today in the sermon, about how to have a more grateful heart, and this is one of the ways. So let us read our Share with God section in our bulletin together, shall we? God of grace, for our failure to love others as you have loved us, forgive us. For wasting your gifts, forgive us. For losing heart and abandoning hope, forgive us. For all the ways we turn from you, forgive us. We offer our prayers in the name of the one who saves us, Jesus Christ. Amen. Sometimes, Thanksgiving is a wonderful, blessed, amazing time. And sometimes it's hard. It's hard because we're missing someone that used to be at the table. It's one reason, right? Or there's some family disturbance that makes it really hard. Either you're missing a person that just has decided not to be in your life anymore, or there's conflict. It is sometimes hard to love through all that. It is sometimes hard to be grateful through that. And in those times, God's with us. God knows how hard it is for us. God sent his son to redeem us for that. For those times when it's hard for us to just accept the situation, to trust in God and to love, unconditionally love. Our friends, we're human. Thank God he made us human. For our sin, we are forgiven and redeemed. Amen. reading from the scripture today is from Deuteronomy 26 verses 1 through 11. This is from the New Revised Standard Version, the updated edition. When you have come into the land that the Lord your God has given you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in an office at that time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God 
that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien. Few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and inflicted us, imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power, and with signs and wonders and he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. This is the Lord of, word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Moving from Deuteronomy into John, John 6. Translation is the Living Bible. When they arrived and found him, they said, Sir, how did you get here? Jesus replied, The truth of the matter is that you want to be with me because I fed you, not because you believe in me. But you shouldn't be so concerned about perishable things like food. No. Spend your energy seeking the eternal life that, like, that I, the Messiah, can give you. For God the Father has sent me for this very purpose. They replied, what should we do to satisfy God? Jesus told them, this is the will of God that you believe in the one he has sent. They replied, you must show us some more miracles if you want us to believe you're the Messiah. Give us free bread every day like our fathers had when they journeyed through the wilderness. As the scriptures say, Moses gave them bread from heaven. Jesus said, Moses didn't give it to them, my father did. And now he offers you true bread from heaven. The true bread is a person, the one sent by God from heaven, and he gives life to the world. Sir, they said, give us that bread every day of our lives. Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. No one coming to me will ever be hungry again. Those believing in me will never thirst. The word of the Lord. Last Sunday after church, I had lunch and started blocking out the worship for the following week. That's what I usually do on Sunday afternoons as I write worship. And then I took a break, doing one of my favorite things, and that was gardening. Now, there was this monster of a plant, a pineapple sage, Pat Lutz had given it to me. It had died back, and the dead sticks were about, oh, 36 inches tall or so. And it was ugly, so ugly, you know, it's dried up. So before the company came on Thanksgiving, I wanted to trim it up. I had my glasses on when I started trimming, but they kept falling off my face every time I bent over. So instead of stopping what I was doing and going to the garage to get the safety goggles, I just kept pruning, just kept pruning. That is until one of the 25-inch hard sticks from the pineapple sage stuck me in the eye. The pain was fierce, and I knew I was in trouble. So I went inside, I rinsed my eye out, and I texted the doctor. They were concerned enough to meet me at the clinic in one hour. Sure enough, I had a corneal wound in the eye. And she showed Ralph the pretty picture, of course, and said it was a large wound. Because I had a wound made by organic matter, there are a few things related to healing and pain relief that couldn't be done or it could damage the sight in my eye. That night, the pain was terrible. Poor Ralph, poor Ralphie, he felt so helpless. I'm leaning over the sink with a compress on my eye, sobbing into the sink, and he's just going, it's gonna be okay, it's gonna be okay. Every day, I had to go back to the doctors to have them measure the wound to see if the edges were knitting back together. And after a while, they did. So then I could have steroid drops for pain relief. This entire experience could have been avoided had I stopped pruning and gone into the garage to get the safety goggles. But I was impatient. I wanted to get the job done. I was lazy. I didn't want to bother with stopping what I was doing. 
I wasn't really thinking about my vision or really caring too much because my goal was to get the task at hand done. It took priority. After I spent that first horrible night in pain, a strange thing happened. I became very overwhelmed with gratitude. The pain made me feel grateful. That's weird, but it did. I felt so stupid for not taking care of my eyes. Even though I acted foolishly, my vision was spared. The situation could have been so much worse. I can't tell you how many times in the last few days I've said to Ralph, I'm so thankful it wasn't worse. I'm so thankful my doctor responded quickly. I'm so thankful for you when you rubbed my back as I sobbed over the sink. I'm so thankful to God that God was with me during that entire ordeal, even in the pain. I was thankful. And it felt strange to be thankful during a bad time. In our first scripture today in Deuteronomy, we're told to give our first fruits to honor God in thanksgiving. When you have come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. Give to God the first that you harvest. But friends, we're no longer an agrarian society. We no longer rely on the products of the land to fully sustain us. So giving to God the first tomato or the first summer squash really has very little meaning to us. But giving to God our firsts really still has merit. Let's try this on instead, a more modern version of the text. Put God first in your lives, in your hearts, then celebrate all that God has given you. Celebrate and be thankful. Let's continue to think of the passage in this more modern context. I'm going to read a different section to you. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you shall celebrate with all the bounty the Lord has given you and your house. Now going back to my eye injury, God asks us to take care of our bodies. They're a temple designed to worship him. I didn't take care of my eye, plain and simple. And what if it had been worse? What if a stick had lodged in my eye? Ooh. What if it required surgery on the cornea? What if I'd lost sight in that eye? When we put God first, put God our first fruits, this means that we place God in the center of our lives and allow God and his teachings through his son to be what we lean on. Then we can share that with others. When we make decisions, whether the decision is a huge, important decision or a small, tiny one like, I don't feel like stopping to go get safety goggles, God needs to be a part of that. You shall set down your fruits, set down your life, and bow down before God. It is not easy. To set down our lives, to put God first in everything, to bow down before God. We've been trained in a different culture, a culture of organized religion that taught most of us our faith foundations. A culture that frankly now is under attack. It's under so much attack that we sometimes want a bit of proof that we should believe in God's right to be first in our lives. This church thing, it can be inconvenient, can be a lot of work, can be political, you have to get up on a Sunday morning, and it sometimes feels as if it's too much bureaucracy and not enough just loving on Jesus. It can make some of us doubt the need for God in our lives. In fact, we sometimes want proof before the belief, proof before the faith. We want a sure thing. If we're going to invest our hearts, our time, our energy, and our resources, we want a sure thing. Listen to the second passage we read today from the book of John. They replied, You must show us more miracles if you want us to believe you're the Messiah. Give us free bread every day like our fathers had when they journeyed through the wilderness. As the scriptures say, Moses gave us bread from heaven. Seems like the disciples had the same issue that we do thousands of years later, and we can't blame this need for proof on an expanded social media presence if the need has been around for centuries. How do we possibly put God first in this crazy, chaotic world that we live in and then give thanks even when the outcome might not be what we expected 
or even what we desired. Let's brainstorm for just a minute. Together, I want us to think of some situations where we might have real trouble trusting in God enough, placing God first in our lives. We're going to actually take a minute during worship. I know you never know what's going to happen here at Big Kids. And then we're going to get in groups of two to three people. You're going to gather together, and you're going to think about the question that we're going to post on the screen right now. What things might happen in my life that are so significant that I find it difficult to trust in God and put God first and then be thankful? Okay, gather together. Anybody, just group together and just talk about this for a few minutes. Just gather together. And look at the question. Keep looking at the question, okay? If you've come up with some, think of someone, because they're still talking, think of someone who Okay, two more minutes. You're doing great.
Okay, one more minute. Doing good. Okay, each group pick a spokesperson because I'm going to ask you to, to um, report out. Super. Jeff, what are you going to, what did you guys come up with? We talked about, you know, having a loss in the family and, uh, you know, people, you know, I'm going through it, you know, they've already been through it, uh, you know, and it, when you're going through that, he, why does God let that happen to you? You know, it's, uh, why does it happen to Sandra? She went to church her whole life. Her dad's a minister. She, you know. You know, being, you just look at somebody that's a strong Christian, and why does something bad happen to him? And I know there's a book out there, why bad things happen to good people. And it's so, true. Yeah. And you look at that, and so it's hard to, you know, it's hard to have the faith to do all that and it's struggle and go through that. But you know, what I told them, I says, me, I think that I look at it this way. I said our rewards not here on earth, our rewards in heaven. And so as hard as it is for us to go through all of that. You know, we still have to go through it and keep our faith that, you know, no matter what happens, that we'll see each other again. And so. That's right. And then the other parts you want us to talk about, you know, talk about this guy that works with me. He, I joke with him about coming to church. He says, you know, if I walk through the doors, I catch on fire, you know, jumped all the time. And yeah. so, but anyway, in the last uh, two or three months, I don't know, his dad is a little bit younger than me. He, take, he taught Taekwondo down here. It's called Brister's Taekwondo or something. Mm -hmm. And he was at a tournament in Texas. He had a heart attack and passed away. So oh. I wonder why, how people that aren't connected to a church or a faith-based thing, how do they deal with things like that when it happens to them? So, of course, so very, very hard. Okay, good, good ideas. Don, do you want to come up just so everyone can hear? It'd be wonderful. In any microphone, doesn't matter which one. I have a good voice. I don't need a mic. Uh, we, we talked about some of the things that you talked about. Several times was how youth can be killed in war or in, in our own country, how you know, people can be murdered. And so that's tough. And you have to wonder, it makes you wonder, uh, how is God involved in this or is God involved in this? And so uh, that's, that's a tough one for us, to, as, as it is for you and what you talked about. Thank you. And Melinda, do you want to come up to Mike? Our group specifically talked about the loss of someone that we love dearly, uh, whether it be a husband, wife, or, or child. And, you know, going through that process of grieving and part of it being the anger and, you know, at a lot of things, but uh, also at God as to why he would allow us to feel this loss. Um, uh, someone in our group that has gone through a lot of that, we asked her uh, how she, you know, got through that mm -hmm. grief, uh, grief. And, you know, she pointed out that you, you know, that's when you really have to rely on your faith. And uh, it also uh, was important that those in our group that had lost someone either uh, through a passing or even just through a relationship that is not there. Uh, having family and friends uh, surround us and mm -hmm. assure us that it is going to be okay makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Who's next? Uh, Roger? I think if we all our suggestions in the bag, we would all come up with pretty much the same things. Yeah, yeah. What we have decided is even at a position that you're applying for or you at work and, and you're the do the best you can and then all of a sudden the guy that's sorrier than you know what, he gets the job and you wonder where is God what is he, where is he, why would he pick somebody like that, you know? But God gives us the ability to make decisions. Sometimes, as Kathy would, came up with this, he gives us the ability and 
we and, and the smartness enough to know what we're supposed to do, but we put off, and then we find that we got illnesses that could have been taken care of five months ago, mm -hmm. and then we want to blame God for it happening to us when he gave us. It's like the guy that when the flood came, yeah. he, and he said, oh, I, I, I'm, I, y'all don't get me with the boat. I'm the God, Lord, Lord's going to take care of me. Then they sent a helicopter. He said, "Oh no, the God's going to take care of me." And he drowned. And he said, "Lord, I thought you was going to take care of me." He said, "I sent a boat and a helicopter. What yeah. else can I do?" That's right. That's you, right. You, you, we, we blame God sometimes yes. for things that we actually should blame ourselves. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Art. Did you want to? Sure, come on up. I think we talked about several things that, that uh, had stuff in common. Um, a lot of times we make long range plans into the future and we're taking control of our lives and trying to plan every step along the way and everything's going well and all of a sudden something happens. And then our lives take a complete turn in another direction Maybe in a direction that we don't see right away is, is a good direction to go. Maybe, you know, we're feeling pain mm -hmm. of, of some sort. And it's easy for us to, I think, just turn away from God um, and just give up, mm -hmm. just be angry. Yeah. And when what we ought to be doing is saying, well, wait a minute, we were really in control in the first place. God has always been in control. And this thing that happened was really planned out for us in advance anyway. What we ought to be doing is looking at what was that plan and how can we make lemonade out of those lemons. Mm. Good thinking, Thanks. yes. And back here, you guys, we'll come up to you. Any microphone? These are really good thoughts, everybody, really good thoughts. Ours was more um, the Alzheimer's with mamas because I just lost mine. Mm -hmm. and. What can, how can you help others through? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and what can we do maybe so that we don't, we can put it off for ourselves? Because mm -hmm. we've got these, the knowledge of what they went through. Maybe we can do something a little differently and help others when they have to face that. Excellent, thank you. So almost all the things that y'all, I took a lot of notes, what you came up with were related to some kind of loss. You know, always some kind of loss, uh, loss in family, um, loss in children, loss a serious illness, loss of a job or job possibilities, loss of freedom, like Alzheimer's. We didn't address one issue that didn't come up because I don't think any of you have experienced that, but people at home might have, being seriously hurt by a clergy or someone in authority in a church. That can make a big impact as well, right? It really can. So when we're content and all is going well, we tend to trust God, right, and live thankful lives. A and when life throws us curveballs, it's a lot harder to give God the wheel and then live a thankful life by putting God in the center of all we do, isn't it? When we're swimming in a shark-infested pool, it's hard to see the shore. When we're swimming in a turtle-infested pool, it's really easy to see the shore. What God asks us to do is to put God first and put him in charge. Sometimes that's what it means by putting God first in your lives. Putting God in charge in all that we do. First fruits can equal first thoughts too. Because if we place God three in one first, we will have all that we need because God sent his son, that bread of life, to sustain us but it is so hard. And God sends us each other to be able to do this. Look at what you did. You gathered in little groups with each other to talk about that. God doesn't put us here to be alone. God puts us here to have each other to talk about this. And I found lately, particularly, that putting God first takes a lot of energy. It just does. But after you do it for a while, 
intentionally put God first, then it becomes a habit until you forget again and something else bad comes up. But that's because we're human. Thank God we're human like me forgetting to take care of my eye, taking care of my body is honoring God. By not going into the garage to get those stupid safety goggles, that was not honoring God, not putting God first, not taking care of myself. And friends, as we leave this time of thanksgiving and enter into a season of, season of Advent, expectation, waiting for joy, we need to be more intentional about putting God first particularly when we're going through hard stuff. By intentionally giving God our first fruits, our trusts, our very selves, we start a lifelong habit of gratefulness. And gratefulness does breed contentment, and contentment breeds trust, and we're, it's easier to hand over the wheel because there's this big circle that happens, that wonderful circle with God at the center of it. Our hunger and thirst for relationship, for contentment, is met through our faith. John 6, my father offers you true bread from heaven. The true bread is a person the one sent by God from heaven, he gives life to the world. Sir, they said, give us this bread every day of our lives. And Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. No one coming to me will ever be hungry again. Those believing in me will never, ever thirst. Our hunger and thirst for relationship, for contentment, will be satisfied by putting God first and by trusting in each other to help us when we're just human. Amen. Another way that we put God first in relationships, in our lives, in our church, is to honor others. And today we're going to do that. We're going to honor others because so many of you donated warm clothing goods for the homeless. Anybody who's in mission and outreach, go grab some stuff and bring it up with you. It's a lot. Let's just put it up here so we can get a big volume of it. And Presbyterian women also help to do this. It's wonderful. I think they help make scarves. How fantastic. Let's bring it all up here so we can see the amount that's been gathered. What they do, so that you know, with these goods, is they have bins at the homeless um, daycare facility, and they put them special, like they'll put hats in one bin and scarves in another bin and socks in another bin and um, gloves in another bin. Look at all of this. This is amazing. And coats. And then whoever comes in with a need of that particular item can shop in that bin. Look at this. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. And we're a small church, y'all. Look, there's still more coming. And we're a small church. Look at this. Raincoats, hats, scarves, sweaters, fleece, sweatshirts, coats. Oh my gosh. This is another example of how we put God first. It just is. It's a great example of how we put God first. Let's pray over these right now. God, we thank you for the many people who have donated these amazing warm weather, well, cold weather clothing for the people who need it the most, God those who are living on the streets or in shelters. The homeless situation is, is so difficult, God. We don't understand it. There are so many who won't come to shelters because they're afraid. It's the best that we can do is to help provide them with warmth when they're out in the cold. And God, we know that your hand has been in this. We know we had to give you the wheel in order for this project to work because we know, God, right now that you are blessing each and in every individual piece that is in these bags, every individual piece, so that when it goes on a person's foot or a hand or a hat or around their head or around their neck, we know, God, that you will be blessing the person who puts it on. So we send these items with your blessing, God, because we know you've been in this project from the get-go, and we know you continue to be in it right now as we send them out. In your name, we gratefully pray. Amen.
Right now, it's time for us to give prayers to God. We've already collected some prayers in the room. We invite you at home to always pray with us as well. God, we lift up this community to you because there have been some struggles lately, oh God. But we're just a small community within a much larger community, within a much larger state, within a much larger country, within a much larger world, God. And right now, there's so many things happening in our world that have us concerned. And so we ask that you be in those somehow. Sometimes we don't know it till later, but we ask that you put your hand in all of this chaos. Because it seems that when you put your hand in the chaos and you stir it up, oh God, that fruitfulness comes out of it. And help us to be part of that fruitfulness. Help us to be part of it, just like we've been part of serving our community with the cold weather gear that we're sending to the homeless. Help us to be somehow a part of the, of the need to be able to touch on that chaos and make it better. God, we all want to have grateful hearts, and, and we don't always because we're human, and we suffer losses and we have confusion, but we ask that you are with us in this journey called life, and when life throws us a hard ball and a hard knock, that you are with us as we journey back toward you because sometimes it's hard to get there. So we ask that you do that and help us to be filled with gratefulness. God, we ask you be with these specific people, to be with Kevin and Tom and Pat and Hartwell and Diane and Sandra and Jeff and Judy and Randy, and Martha, and Tracy, and Edwin, and Andrew, and Amon, and Sheila, and Jerry, and Bob, and Shirley, and Anne. Also, Lord, with all the travels people have been coming to and fro, we ask that you continue to give people safe travel. We've had some accidents here due to foggy weather, and we ask specifically that you get Jerry home and Bailey home safely in their journeys. Lord, we give all to you in so many ways, and we give you our lives, and we ask that you continue to teach us like you have through your Son, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we have entered this church with thanksgiving in our hearts, let us remember that we have the opportunity to joyfully share from the bounty of which God has provided. In the love and name of Christ, we give as an action of that love. At the back of the room, there is a box for our offerings and a box to support the Presbyterian Home for Children. For you at home, if you feel led by the Spirit to contribute to the activities that support the mission and vision of Big Cove Presbyterian Church, please go to our website at www.bigcovechurch.org. Now, let us share our gifts.
please pray with me. God, who has given us so much, here and now we offer our gifts in thanksgiving for what we have been given. May our hearts rejoice in the opportunity to share your gifts with the world. Amen. Join with me in your blessing and sending in your bulletin. We're going to bless and send together. The back of the bulletin. You'll see it in the middle part. As we have been fed, let us go to feed the hungry. As we have been set free, let us go to set free the imprisoned. As we have been received, let us give. As we have heard, let us proclaim. And the blessings which we have received from the Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit be always with us. Amen.